NASA astronauts are trained to handle almost any threat they face in space, except drowning. July the 16th, 2013. Astronauts Luca Palmitano and Chris Cassidy embark on a planned six-hour spacewalk to install vital electrical components to the exterior of the International Space Station. Relay check on Luca's complete. On my way. But 44 minutes into his tasks, Palmitano gets a sickening surprise. I feel a lot of water on the back of my head. Hey, Luca, we got it. That's a surprise. Surprise during a spacewalk? That's bad. Cassidy, who's filming the unfolding drama, tries to help his colleague locate the source of the leak. And I cannot tell you the source. Chris, looking into Luca's helmet, sees that the water is increasing. I don't understand where it's coming from. It can't be the water, it be the bag. Their first thought is that it's probably the drinking bag on the inside of the suit, but they're not sure. Parmitano immediately empties his drinking bag, but the water level in his helmet continues to rise. After eight minutes, the water reaches his ears. Feels like a lot of water. I am a feeling that it's increasing. This is something that nobody is trained for, and we're not sure uh, where the water is coming from, how quickly it's accumulating, and how to deal with it. It's an entirely new problem for mission control and it takes them time to assess the situation. NASA engineers expect that in zero G, surface tension will make the water cling to the interior of the helmet. But it doesn't. Water is in his eyes now and it seems to be increasing. And with his head sealed in the spacesuit helmet, it's impossible for Luca to wipe the water away. Mission Control has no choice but to abort the spacewalk. Uh, we think we're going to terminate EVA case for EV2. As Parmitano makes his way back to the airlock, instead of clinging to the helmet, the water is sticking to his skin. With no gravity to make it fall away, a small quantity could kill him. And the water keeps coming, swelling into a ball which starts to envelop his entire head. At this point, it's become critical because the water is starting to obstruct his airway. He could try to drink it, but more is going to come take its place, so he's got to constantly fight to keep that airway open. As Palmitano struggles to enter the hatch, the ISS crew, looking on helplessly through the window, know he potentially only has seconds to live. Towards the end of this catastrophic spacewalk, there's a liter and a half of water inside the helmet. If he makes a single mistake, he's dead. There's nothing anyone can do to help him. By the time the airlock is safe to open, Parmitano has been holding his breath for two minutes. In a critical situation like this, you've got to keep a clear head and do things in order, quickly, efficiently, so you can get the helmet off and save the guy's life. You honestly have to be very careful. If you do things too fast, you could actually cause worse damage. Heavy-handed movements could disrupt the astronaut's own efforts to keep the water from getting into his mouth. Even as his colleagues rush to remove the helmet, the lack of gravity means Parmitano has to fight to clear his airways before finally taking a breath. This is by far the closest we ever came to losing an astronaut during a spacewalk. The close call prompts NASA to launch a full investigation into the cause of the near fatal leak. NASA's figured out that a clogged line in the cooling system caused this, but they haven't figured out how that clog occurred. After a five-month investigation, NASA technicians reveal that the blocked line was caused by a lump of inorganic particulate material. But how the material entered Parmitano's airtight spacesuit remains unexplained. Hawaii, August 2013. Astronomers at the Pan-STARRS Survey Telescope spot an intriguing object between Jupiter and Mars. It defies initial attempts at identification, but they name it Asteroid P5. What's particularly unusual about this asteroid is that it seems to have several cometary tails. Astronomers are perplexed by what they see. A month later, astronomers track the object 
using NASA's super-powerful Hubble telescope. What they see blows their minds. Not only are there just a few tails, there are actually six distinct tails emanating from the nucleus of the asteroid. Every time they look at it, it looks different. One tail on an asteroid is unusual. Six tails is completely unheard of. These tails keep appearing, disappearing, shifting direction. Something else is going on here. Asteroids shouldn't have a tail, let alone six of them. As scientists try to solve the mystery, speculation mounts. One theory is that the tails might be the debris caused by a space collision. But the data doesn't add up. Collision doesn't make any sense in this particular situation. This collision won't create six tails. We're not looking at a collision here, as that would be a one-off event. Here we see tails evolving over time, over the course of several months. So a different mechanism is involved. But if they're not caused by a collision, what could explain an asteroid with six tails? To some, these look like traces of attitude control thrusters. Attitude jets are pulses of thrust that are used to control the motion of a spacecraft. Although the idea comes from science fiction, it makes good scientific sense. An asteroid is pretty much a perfect ready-made shell for a spacecraft. Aerodynamics don't matter when you're traveling through the vacuum of space, and the rock provides an excellent structure and excellent protection against radiation. One of the difficulties of space travel is galactic cosmic rays. They can actually kill you, for instance. So the advantage of being just a few foot below an asteroid surface is that you're actually shielded from these high energy galactic cosmic rays. But astronomers think a natural explanation for the strange phenomenon is more likely. Looks like what we're seeing with P5 is it's an object that was spun up by this uh, effect of the sun's radiation and to the point where it was spinning so fast that the material started to leave the surface. So when you look at it one day, its tail orientation is in one direction. You look at it another day, well, the thing's been spinning around multiple times since the last time you looked, and now stuff's coming off of it in a different way. So it's really a spinning problem, not a, not a steering problem. Some asteroids may just fall apart at these high spin rates, but this one is so tough and so rocky and so hard that it actually just stays together. That unstable material avalanches down from the peaks into the trough and is ejected into space as a fine stream of material that looks like a tail. 